on the 21st of January 1985, former President Yusuf Kironde Rule died in London. Rule had been President of Uganda for only 68 days in 1979. He had come in with the Liberation Forces of the Uganda National Liberation Front and was removed. He was exiled and following the 1980 general elections, he formed the Uganda Freedom Fighters, a rebel group based in Nairobi. In June 1981, at a secret meeting in Nairobi, UL Museveni's Popular Resistance Army combined forces with the Uganda Freedom Fighters to form the National Resistance Movement with Professor Ule as its first chairman. Had he lived up to the 26th of 1986, probably Ule would be president of a newly liberated Uganda. Sadly, it was not the case. When he died in London, there was a video when the body was brought for burial in 1987, Professor Ole lay in state at Parliament before he was buried at the Heroes Cemetery in Kololo. Irene Dukesoka covered this event from Entebbe Airport up to Kololo, and it is my pleasure to take you back to the burial of Professor Yusufu Kironde Ole. The late Professor Yusuf Salongo Kironde Lule was a pioneer in many things. As such, he inspired many people of his generation. He was one of the first graduate teachers at Budo, the first African to be appointed full lecturer at the University of East Africa, the first Ugandan chairman of the Public Service Commission, the first Ugandan principal of Makerere University College, and the first Secretary General of the Association of African Universities. Between 1955 and 1961, he served as Minister of Rural Development and later of Education in the colonial government. Amongst his achievements during this period was the promotion of Ugandan Africans in trade and the setting up of rural training centers. After independence, Lule became chairman of the Public Service Commission. In 1963, he became principal of Makere University, a post he filled with great distinction. As principal, he transformed Makere from a small struggling college of about 800 students to a fully-fledged university of worldwide reputation. In 1970, Professor Lule became Assistant Secretary General of the Commonwealth Secretariat in charge of education and health. At the, 19, at the end of 1972, he answered the call of Africa to become the first Secretary General of the Association of African Universities. As President of Uganda in 1979, he inspired and gave hope to the entire country. During his short term of office, he formed a government of national unity truly representative of all regions and shades of opinion. In July 1980, the Uganda government barred him from returning to his homeland and to his people to participate in the general election of 1980 and in further contributing to the rebuilding of Uganda. This started his third exile and was the reason for his decision to lead the military struggle against the Obote regime in the interest of the restoration of democracy and human rights to Ugandans. It is against this background that this week Ugandans will witness the state funeral for Yusuf Salongo Chironde Lule as he is finally laid to rest in his homeland. The Right Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Samson Kiseka in his capacity as chairman of the organizing committee for the state funeral gives us the brief on the arrangements for the funeral starting on Wednesday 21st January 1987. This brief will be followed by a recorded version of the funeral of late Professor Yusuf Lule in London in 1985. You must have remembered that it has been put in the press saying, you listen to me, saying that the remains of Professor Yusuf Lay 
will be brought here, will be flown to Kampala for this being the anniversary celebration. We thought that the first chairman of, of the National Resistance Movement <coughs> should be flown here. We made a pledge two years ago in London when, when we attended the first funeral that one day, one day, we will be in a position to bring back the remains of our, our beloved Professor Rulay. So we thought that this is the time when we have been in power for one year so that we, we can bring in the remains of uh, Professor Rulay. So the casket, the exhumation will take place on the 21st, which is the day after tomorrow. The, it will be, the casket will be at the, at the airport by midday on Wednesday. And we expect the Uganda Airlines to fly in the casket by, by 8 in the morning on the following day, on Thursday 22nd. The, the, there will be an interview. There will be the reception, reception committee dealing with that. And then from there, we will come straight to the parliament. There, there will be the assembling of the National Resistance Council. And the president will address the nation on this particular item. After that, the NRC will adjourn. And then the public will be allowed to come and uh, go around the casket when the remains lay in state. On Thursday, starting at 2, up to 8. And then on Friday, starting at 7, up to 8. There will be no viewing on Saturday because that will be the burial day. The, the casket is supposed to, to be in the church by 8.20 on Saturday morning. And then we have all these, uh, all the services in the church until 10.15. By 11, the casket will be at the parliament. And then it will be march past, taking the body through Wampeo Avenue up to Kororo Airstrip, where it must be by trial. Then the clergy will start their work for about 20 minutes. We allow only one uh, uh, lady or gentleman from the deceased family just to say a few words. Then I'll be in a position to call in the president also to say whatever he what would like to say. After that, then that will be the end of the burial. That's the, the, the whole program of the state funeral. You understand it? Now, we have formulated some committees which have been dealing with all this. We have Uh, before I go to that, we had to find a burial place. And uh, this was very necessary, to have a burial place. So uh, in any big country, any independent country, you must have a burial place. In America, in Britain, all over the place even in Mozambique, down in where I went to, to, to attend the funeral of Som Somara Marshall. They have a burial place. And they, we thought that, uh, the committee thought, that, uh, would, that um, Corolla would be the best place for burial. And uh, that's how we have the, uh, selected to have this for the heroes. And some important statesmen of this country must be put together. And this is the first one we have uh, tried to get this. Now we have some committees 
The first one was the burial site subcommittee, where the Honorable Chigozi Minister of Works is the chairman. And we have Dr. Sari, a member. Mr. Ankwatra, the permanent secretary of housing, is a member. And the other members to be selected, we said, they could cop on that committee. Then we have the functions of that committee uh, was to design the site, digging and building the grave, work out the layout of the parking, the parking place, space, shade and setting area, physical layout for crowd control and parade area. And uh, we asked specifically the Minister of Works, uh, Engineer Chigozi, to try and take the purchases of materials and supervision of contractors. Then we have the Lunguja subcommittee, where Mr. Pade Blake is the chairman. Then we have the Honorable Chigozi member. And we have Mr. I. Sari as a member and Dr. Sari as a member. The functions of this committee were to make arrangements for repairs and necessary renovation of the residence of the Professor Dule and provision of water supply, erection of temporary shade and seating arrangements for mourners, arranged to receive all personnel, personal effects arriving with the border from Entebbe Airport to the residence, and the erection of temporary toilet facilities, yes, sir. Then we have arrival and the airport subcommittee. And this committee is headed by Honorable Balakiria as chairman. Then we have Honorable Kirunda Hivejinja, member, the Minister of Transport. We have Mr. Sali Isaac. We have Honorable Sam Njuba. We have Commander Tumine, Mr. Tefrumia, and the Chief of Protocol. That's the rival at a, a, a airport subcommittee. The functions to finalize all the necessary arrangements to receive the body of the Professor Dole, the widow, members of the family, and the friends accompanying the body. Then transportation of the body from Entebbe to Kampala up to parliamentary buildings where the body will lay in state and arrange the public movement who will be paying their last respect during the last the two days the body will lay in state at parliamentary building. Then we have the publicity and the state funeral program, where we have the chairman, Honorable Abu Mayanja, Mr. Sente Zakajubi member, Mr. James Navuria, and they, they have to uh, copt some other members. And uh, the other prominent member is the ambassador in Canada, Mr. James, uh, Mr. Joseph Tom Sange. Now the function of this subcommittee it's work out the state funeral arrangements in cooperation with the rival laying in state subcommittees, the steward committee, and the burial site committee. And uh, the transportation of the body from London to Entebbe, Kampala, all that has been, uh, has, this has been done. Ceremonial reception at Entebbe that I have talked to you about it. And I have given you all the committees which are dealing with this important occasion. So this being so, I think it must, the press must, the public is entitled to know exactly what is going to happen. And I have told you exactly. We are asking some, a few people who have uh, some uh, what they want to say about Rule really, to come to the information office in the, the Minister of Information so that they are given time to say what they, whatever they want to say during this week. So the public is asked. This will be the beginning today with this video, with the program given to you and the video outwards. Then any other person will be appearing on the, on the TV or radio during this time. But I'm asking the public to make sure that these things are being done properly. It is a state 
you know. And uh, I expect people to be here. I don't like the crowd. The crowd has to be controlled by the police and the army. So it's not a matter of uh, anybody doing it, what, whatever they want during these processions.
responsible for the political instability, insecurity, and lack of progress in our country. And those who turned up for this purpose, unfortunately, that have been barred from returning to his home and to his people to participate in the generation of 1980 and further contributing to the period of the Vietnam. Nothing could be far from the truth. Lully was a highly respected person, a conscientious one, who has been a character. He gave the best education that any parent could wish for his children. At the time of his death, his family, including his grandchildren, was one of the first I have seen. And one which should be an example to all and to all the family. We pray for you in this hour very sorry, and we assure you of our daughter's friendship and support. On my own part, I have always had the Lord's family as my own, and I continue to regard it and treat it in the same way. Continued 
and intensified until final victory. In this regard, we expect every Islamic Ugandan to play his or her part without counting the cost or what he or she will personally benefit at the end of the struggle. The only benefit we should look forward to is the security and peace of all Ugandans. The only fitting tribute we can pay to the Salon of Rey is to see that unity, peace and democracy are established in Uganda so that we do not have to bury the sons and daughters of Uganda outside their own country. Scripture says, I believed and therefore I spoke out. And we too, in the same spirit of faith, and therefore speak out. For we know that who raised Jesus, Lord Jesus, to life, will with Jesus raise us too and bring us to his presence and you with us. Indeed, it is for your sake that all things are ordered, so that as the abandoning grace of God is shared by more and more, the greater may be the chorus of thanksgiving that ascends to the glory of God. No wonder we do not lose heart, though our outward humanity is in decay. Yet day by day we are inward renewed. Our troubles are slight and short-lived, and the outcome, an internal glory which is weighs them far. Meanwhile, our eyes are fixed not on the things that are seen, but on the things that are unseen. For what is seen passes away, what is unseen is eternal.
Dear Lord Jesus Christ, who by thy cross and thy grave, we consecrate this grave in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, that your servant would rest in here one day, might be raised to newness of life, where you reign in glory forever. Abamramu era kuna kuru alila vika okunzu kiza kwa mkufa. Wanga katonda inza vyo naya gadolo ekisache chinjo kutwale uwe uramu uwe urgando ono Omagalwa Kedewa kuteko mbili kwe mutaka 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 evumu vu evufu mufufu Mwafisi uviranga anti Kedewa kutubusa vusa 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 Mwafisi uviranga anti we are most desolate and send you and all the children our heartfelt sympathies and fondest love. May you so rest in eternal peace. Alex, Evelyn and children. <coughs> National Resistance Movement, Sweden Branch. Dear Mrs. Zule, we as members of the NRM Sweden Branch would like to express our deepest condolence on the un untimely death of the late Professor Yusuf Zule at such a critical moment of our struggle. <coughs>
have chosen that hymn, as you know, it is the Uganda Matters hymn. They too were facing dictatorship and they could not in many ways bow to any suggestion that they had no freedom or liberty to worship or pray the way they wanted. It is a hymn which speaks of Zion and for us, I'm sure, here probably would be more or less an expression that one day at some place, because Uganda very much, like for the Hebrew slaves, Zion was a place of peace, of joy, of love, of gentleness, that someday for us, if we were able to be like angels, we would be able to fly to our motherland. And I want to believe that God still would dwell there and give us that same sense of security. So these exiles in Babylon were longing, longing to go back to Zion, which was a place of joy of love. And Uganda, for many of us, still is very much like that. And I actually believe God has not forsaken our country. <laughs> 